So you want to know how to build an app in Odoo. Of course you do. It seems like everybody does in my little corner of the world right now. So we're going to start with nothing and go to this. You have a nice new app with all your machines and everything else. And yep, it's going to have all this information. It's going to be tied into our field service ticket. So you'll be able to go into a field service ticket and you'll be able to come in and say, okay, yep, it's tied to this machine from your contacts. You'll be able to see, okay, this contact right here has these machines and then if it's a location you'll be able to see what machines are at that location now one of the best things about odoo is how easy it is to customize and that extends to building out a full app now you can go super deep with this you can make this super complicated adding a bunch of different automations and a bunch of different things but i do want to show you just how to make a basic app because a lot of times for businesses it's not necessarily about making something super fancy it's more about just making sure we're collecting the right data and connecting it with the right pieces in the rest of odoo so the app i decided to do is a machine database so it looks at what machines are with which customers and how many different interactions we've had with them going out and repairing it or different things like that. So I've created a fresh new demo database for this. Let's go ahead and hop in. So we're going to start off super simple here. Make sure you're in the main app page that you're in developer mode. Click the monkey if you have it. And then we're going to go into studio and you can see it says new app. So we're going to go ahead and click that. Click next. And then we're going to name our app. So for this, I'm just going to say machines. And then I'm going to go through the process of designing my icon, which is fairly straightforward. So I'm not necessarily going to bore you with this, but I'm going to come through, choose an icon and we'll see, is there a good machine? Let's see. Nothing there. I'm just going to say cog and we're going to go with that guy. And the background, we'll just make purple and go on to next. So it gives you the choice to say, is this based on an existing model? Meaning, is it based on an existing table inside of Odoo? So I could create a new app for sales and have this based on sales if I wanted to. But we're doing something new here. So we're going to say this is a new model and we're going to say machines and go to next. Now, Odoo has some helpful little stuff because they realize you probably want to connect this to different things. So I can come into this and say, well, I want to connect contact details. I want to connect a user to this. Um, I want to have some stages. I want to have a picture, do some notes, um, throw up a cost in here, add details to my records. So I can do all this stuff. And yes, this is great. But the thing is, is I want to do this in a way that it's going to work better for later on down the road. So we're only going to include these three, custom sorting, chatter, and archiving. And we're going to go ahead and create our app. So once I click this, it dumps me into the form view, which is a great place to start. But right now, I want to go into my views and go to list view. And I'm going to change this to machine just as the machine name here. And that was simple enough, but now we want to go back into the form view and we want to think through, okay, what kind of information do we want to collect on this machine? And really, what information do we want to link into in the rest of Odoo from this record? So one of the first things that I think we'd want to do is link this up to a customer. So I'm going to grab a many to one from over here, drop it in, and we're going to go and connect that to our contact model, meaning our list of contacts. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. And we're going to call this guy customer. Now, the reason we want to make sure and rename stuff is so that we get a good field right here. You can always come in and change this label later, but we want to make sure that for reference further on down the road, that this gives us a nice clean technical name. I'd also think that we'd want to have another contact record here. And this would be for the actual location of the machine. Okay, so we can have address cards and contacts. So I'm going to call this location. And so we're going to have our customer. They may be at an entirely different location. We need to send our bill to a different location. That's our customer. 
but as far as where we need to go to service this machine, that's going to be our location. I'd also assume that we want to be able to know the brand and model number of this machine because it's going to be fairly hard to service the machine and bring the right parts if we don't know what the model number is. So for the brand, I like to stick with nice lists. So I'm going to go up to edit menu. I'm going to add a new menu and we're just going to say brands. And this is going to be a new model because we want this to be separate. We're going to create that menu. And now I have brands. We're going to go ahead and confirm that. Go to brands. And I'm going to just change the name of this to brand here. And now we're going to go back into machines. And I'm going to go to my form view. And I'm going to do a many to one linking to my new table slash model called brands. So I'm going to say brand and we're going to bring that in and I'm going to say I want to call this brand so that it cleans up my technical name down there. And then we're going to add a character field called model number. And to go just a bit further beyond model number, we're also going to add serial number so that we can really identify this guy and tie it down. And you can decide not to do this, but I like to make sure that all of my information is there when I need it. So I don't want to have a machine in the database that doesn't have a customer. So I'm going to say this is required. I'm going to say the location is also required. Brand, definitely want that to be required model number required as well. Serial number, we don't absolutely need this, so I'm not going to require it here. All right, that's a good start. Let's go ahead and test this out. So closing out of studio, we can come in and I'm going to call this the glue globber 5000. And our customer is going to be Deco Addict, the location. It's going to be with Miss Addison Olson. The brand, I don't have any brands yet. So I can go ahead and create one on the fly. And this is going to be the Flim Flam Company. I'm sounding like Dr. Seuss with this. I probably need to stop that. But the model number is going to be 5J789A. Serial number. We don't need a serial number on this, but we're going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And go ahead and save that. So it looks like it's working well so far. If I were to take off model number and try and save, it's going to say, eh, mm, you need a model number. So we're going to put that back and save it. But really, this is decent form control so far. We've got the information that we need where we've got a machine. It's tied to a customer, a specific location. We've got a brand, which we've now got a list of brands here that we can use. I've only got one so far, but we can add to the list. list. But we have our model number and our serial number. Now here's the fun part. We now need to start looking at the transactional level of this machine. Basically our interactions with this machine and how we trigger those interactions and what information we want to store on those interactions. So here's something that I should have said at the beginning, but it's an important piece. When we're building an app, we don't want to necessarily recreate the wheel. We don't want to recreate data sets that are somewhere else in Odoo or functionality that's somewhere else in Odoo. So it's important for us to stop and think, okay, these machine interactions, what are they really going to be? Is this potentially going to be a project or a task? Um, maybe we want it tied to a sales order, but we need to stop and think about that. And admittedly, I've only got a YouTube comment to go off of for this. I haven't had a conversation with this viewer about what they want this to do, but they did say they're a field service company. So I'm going to assume that each of these interactions is likely to be a field service ticket. And so we're going to use that model or data set as our transactional level for these machines. So let's pop on over to field service and see what we have to work with. Now field service basically organizes our team that's out away from the office. If we click in, we can see there's a bunch of information already recorded on here that we may be able to use to tie to our machine. So tying this to a machine is pretty dang simple. We're going to go into studio and then we're going to grab a many to one 
bring it over here and you can stick it wherever you want i'm just dropping it right there and we're going to type machines because this is tied to the machine here now we're going to go ahead and change the name so that this is machine and that is really all we need to do on the field service side right now now let's go back over to our machines in studio so i'm going to go to machines and i've got my glue globber 5000 but i want to go to my form view and we want to be able to see all the interactions relative to this machine so we want to show all these field service tickets so i'm going to grab the tabs here get myself some tabs and we're going to call this tab field service tickets and what i want to see here again is all my field service tickets so i'm going to grab this one to many drag it over and we're going to say okay what relationships are here well we've only got one and that's tied to task which tasks are what field service tickets are so we're going to grab that guy go ahead and confirm this and again we want to rename this guy so that it looks nice so we're going to say field service tickets it's going to clean up our technical name down here and then we're going to do a bit of cleanup because this really doesn't look very nice i mean i want it to fill the whole screen instead of just being crunched in here and i don't need the label again so let's go into view xml and there's a little trick here that you can run okay so right here i've got a notebook which is basically a list of tabs and i've got a page which is field service tickets that's great but I want to get rid of these groups here. I want the field to fill the whole page. So I'm going to get rid of these groups so that it's only page, then field, then the closing tag for page. And we're going to go ahead and save that and close. And that looks a heck of a lot better. Now, I don't have any field service tickets tied to my machine. So we're going to fix that real quick. I'm going to go back to machines. I've got my glue globber 5000. I'm going to keep that up. And we're going to come back over here and say we're doing boiler maintenance on the glue globber, which apparently is a fairly complex machine if it's got a boiler as well. So we're going to say, OK, this is for the glue globber 5000. And I'm going to say, OK, in addition to that, I need to install a new pipeline system on the glue globber 5000. We're going to go ahead and save that. And now, when we come back and look at our Glue Globber 5000, I really should have chosen something different because I'm almost tripping over all that. Now you can see, here's all the field service tickets that we've had relative to this machine. And I really want to keep this simple, so I'm going to go into Studio, and I'm going to edit this list view, and Priority is great, Title is great, Project, these are all field service tickets, so I don't need to see the project. So I'm going to make this always invisible, okay? Assignees, this is important. It's good to see who went out and took care of this. Time spent, that's great. Project, also, or progress, that's also great. Next activity, don't really need to see this here. I'm going to make it invisible. Tags, I mean, sure, whatever. And then stage is good, too, to see exactly where we're at with this. And because this is transactional, I'm going to go ahead and drop in a nice date here so that we can see when this happened. And then we're going to close out and let's look at our beautiful app so far. So you can see I've got all this information related to the machine and we've got all of our interactions or field service tickets so far. Pretty great, right? And pretty simple. But now we want to make this even better. Now, normally this would happen before we even built the app, but we're going to stop and think because this is all based, again, on a YouTube comment. We're going to stop and think about where else it might be important to be able to see this information. And there's a couple obvious places I can think of. So go back out to your main page and let's go into contacts. Okay. And we are going to look for, well, let's make sure we're looking in the right place. So we're going to go to Deco Addict first just so that we have a good example. And we're going to go into Studio, and we're going to add a tab here, and we're gonna call it Machines. And with that, we're going to add a one-to-many here, and this is going to be our machines. So we're gonna to go to Search More, because it brings it up a little bit more easily, and we're going to type Machine. And actually, 
we're going to put that in the model so we actually get it. And this is going to be, okay, we want to see first the ones that are linked to this customer. So we're going to go ahead and confirm that. And let's go into this and we're going to rename it and we're going to say machines. Go ahead and click away. And then we're going to go into our view, go to XML. It's going to automatically bring us to our studio customization. So that's good. And you can see again, we've got that whole page string thing. We want to get rid of the groups get rid of these groups and go ahead and save and close. And you can see now for Deco Addict, we can see that they have the Glue Globber 5000. And I can also come in and I can add a line right here to add another machine for Deco Addict, which is pretty sweet. And I did say a couple. So what I also want to do is I want to go into studio and I want to say, okay, I've got machines, but I also want to be able to see if this is a location, which it is, technically speaking, a location and a company. We're going to say machines at this location. And you might be able to think of something more succinct, but, you know, it's not a competition. So chill out a bit. So we're going to go into this and we're going to say one to many. And we're going to go in and search more. And we're going to say machine is our model. And for this one, we want to link to our location. So we're going to grab that, go ahead and confirm. And at Deco Addict themselves, we don't have any machines right now. So this makes sense. We're going to say machines at this location. Go ahead and click away. And we're going to come in and we're pretty old hat at this right now. So we're going to go to XML, expand this a little bit so our friends in the audience can see. Go ahead and delete those groups so that we can see that more plainly and then we're going to close out and we're going to see okay there are no machines at this location but if we look at the glue globber and go to addison olson out here and click in you can see she doesn't have any machines specifically assigned to her but we do have machines at this location okay guys so we've built out a fairly simple but very powerful little app here there's a lot that we can do with this, and our navigation is actually pretty good at this point, because if I need to create a field service ticket, I can go ahead and create that and assign it to machine. If I need to go into the customer first, so say we go into our customer first, customer calls us and we're like, they're saying, oh, I need to get my machine fixed, and it's like, well, which machine? And they say, oh, you know, I'm not sure, and we say, okay, well, I see that you've got the Glue Globber 5000 and maybe five or six other ones. And they say, oh, yes, the Glue Globber 5000. So we go ahead and click into this and we say, oh, I've got the Glue Globber 5000. That's great. And they say, hey, could you send somebody out to service this? And we say, oh, definitely. So we click add a line right here for field service tickets. And it's going to bring up a new field service ticket for us to create, which then we can view. Um, well, we'll click one that's already here. And go to view we can go ahead and view that set up all the details and assign it to somebody and we didn't have to go searching for anything we were able to just move through this in a nice fluid format so that wasn't so bad right i mean now we've got this new app and it really didn't take us that long to put it together the true beauty of this is every business is different at least a little bit different and essentially odoo allows you to put together the pieces that you have for your business that maybe are just unique to you. So if for some reason you were putting off building an app or you were just kind of using an Excel spreadsheet to supplement Odoo, you don't need to do that anymore. You can go ahead and build one of these. If you want to do something more advanced than what we've done here, say you want to add a button or you want to connect to another system, go ahead and check out some of my other videos and I would start with this playlist right here. And as always, if you have questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Or if you want some time with me one on one and we can build out one of these together, go ahead and grab time in my Calendly. And certainly, please check out my courses. Those are also linked in the description below. Thanks again for stopping by, guys. We'll see you again soon.